Hello, I'm Margaret Munoz. Let me tell you a story. I had a client arrive one day very disturbed and angry because no one in her family was listening to her. And it seemed as if she had to rant and rave for anyone to hear her. And worse, this was nothing new. Uh, she had a husband and four children, so theoretically there were plenty of people to listen to her. But nobody was. So I asked her when she could remember first feeling like that. And she immediately recounted a fascinating incident uh, when she was about two and a half, so, so very young, when she went to visit her grandmother with her mother and baby sister. They left the baby on the bed upstairs and went to sit in the kitchen. My client was really upset at the baby being left on the bed and kept racing up and down the stairs to check on the baby. She just knew that she wasn't okay. She became convinced that there was a lady in blue who was going to take her sister away. She couldn't lift the baby off the bed, so she ran into the kitchen for the umpteenth time and screamed this news to her mother and grandmother finally went up the stairs, picked the baby off the bed and told my client angrily that the baby was fine and she had been lying. At that moment, the great big picture of the Virgin Mary, dressed in blue of course, fell off the wall behind the bed onto where the baby would have been. So what my client learned from this is that the only way to be heard was to say it really loudly and with anger. Any other way, she didn't get heard. So this belief was being reflected back to her many years down the track. So it's really important to, to understand that what is showing up for you in the present time stems from your beliefs, the meanings you made about things, the experiences you had often way back in your past. We're all connected by and, and live in a unified energy field, which we label in different ways, the universe, uh, the matrix, source energy, non-local non mind. It really doesn't matter what you uh, call it. And as well as the unified field that connects all being, there are also local fields like around our body which shape not only our physical form but also our behaviours and, and habits. They're local to us but are also influenced by and uh, connected to the unified energy field. So these have been labelled morphic fields and they're habitual and the more they're repeated, the stronger they become. Don't we? Don't we know it? And they're influenced by what has gone before through a process called morphic resonance. Our behaviours, emotions, even diseases have their own energetic fields which impose rhythmic patterns on the nervous system, which affect the sensory and motor regions of the brain. Our lives unfold mainly according to our experiences between conception and age six or seven, and are especially influenced by what happens um, at our birth, um, which most people don't realize, and I certainly didn't either. Uh, from birth to two, you experience delta brain waves, and from two to six, you experience theta brain waves, and both of these are hypnotic states. So when you're young, there's no rational conscious mind to analyze and figure things out like we do when we're adults. When the rational mind does finally kick in, it's ended up with all these meanings which affect the way we think. And you, you might have heard the, the phrases, thoughts become things, or mind turns into matter. 
What also happens is that with every perceived trauma, whether somebody told you you were stupid or you were hospitalised when you were two, a freeze response uh, through your adrenal glands, the hypothalamus and the pituitary happens. It, it's like a, it's a protective mechanism. But the trouble is we don't discharge that freeze response and it's then held in our field and the trauma is relived over and over again, often beyond the threshold of awareness held in the subconscious mind. You get to find that it's there when you're triggered in some way. Just like my client was triggered and then discovered where her response was coming from. So when you're puzzled about how you're reacting or behaving in a way that you don't wish to, it can be really useful to understand that it's not so much about the present moment but what your past experiences cause you to believe or hope for or fear. And of course, what tapping is so good at is directly working on these experiences and helping to make those emotional and cognitive shifts that enable us to respond and create differently now. It helps to reset the... Um, amygdala, which is in the midbrain, which is the center for the stress response, our emotions and our long-term memory. This is why we tap. Happy tapping. See you again soon. Bye.